what are the three vows that are taken by the religious and how can we apply it to ourselves in a sort of uh, layman's monk season? We have poverty. So all monastics take a vow of poverty. That essentially means that I don't own anything. And in fact, before you go into a monastery, you sell all your goods and you give everything you have to the community, right? So a lot of you, you know, uh, millennials who like socialism, <laughs> right? You got they, millennials are so funny, or socialists are really funny. Not all millennials are socialists, where they want communal living through communism because it sounds so fun, but they want the government to do it for to everybody. I tell you what, if you have a communist mindset. Or, or leaning, let me put it that way, a communist socialist leaning like we should all share, sell all your stuff and then go into a monastery. That's, that's, that's taking a vow of poverty and living in, communal, in a communal setting. The problem is with communists, y'all don't have religion. You're not allowed to have religion. The state becomes your religion. Government becomes your religion. Anyway, I'm going on side rants right now. So the very first vow of a man going into the monastery and potentially living his life for a season in monk mode is pov poverty. I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. Let's continue. Number two, chastity. A vow of chastity means that I'm not having sex. That's all, that's, that's through and through what it is, black and white, plain and simple. When it comes to the monastic life, you're not having sex, sex with women. You're not having se you're not having sex at all. But I don't know. Maybe these guys get bored and start wanting to do something <laughs> together with all these guys. The point is, chastity is the second vow. You are chaste. I don't have sex. I don't masturbate. I don't watch pornography. I don't blow my load unless my load blows itself. Essentially. And number three, possibly, Charlie. And then this is a tough one. This is a tough one. It's going to be a real tough one. It might even be more tough than chastity for a lot of you guys. But I'm going to explain to you, as I have been very recently, the power of this one because it was a hard. This was a hard one for me to swallow for a very long time in my own uh, mindset. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this here for you guys as well. Drum roll, right? You guys are waiting as I move my screen around, give me a moment. Poverty, chastity, obedience. Obedience. So when you go into a monastic life, you go live with the monks, you're a legit monk now, you no longer let your ego make the decisions for you. You no longer have, uh, what's the word, custody over yourself. You give custody over to your superior, right? I learned recently, actually I read this today, that the corporate structure when you join a, a corporation, the corporate structure is modeled after the Catholic Church. And so this idea of obedience and hierarchy in an organization, well, I don't want to say it comes from them, but it's, it's very um, inspired by it. But obedience. As a monk, you no longer live by your own will. You no longer make your own decisions. Everything that you do, you must ask permission. And if given a task, you must complete it. Now, of course, I want to put it out there that there is such a thing as righteous leadership. Because I know I can see y'all right now cringing. Cringe. Some slapdick's going to tell me what to do. Who is he? Well, the type of virtue, the type of detachment, the type of discipline, commitment that is required to be a real monk means that I deny myself, self-denial. Self-denial is perhaps one of the strongest masculine traits 
that we could develop. I know it doesn't sound that way in our very effeminate world where most men think like women and it's all about me, 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 me. Solipism, right? What's that word? Sol solipistic, S-O-L-O, -O, solipistic, solipism. Solip, I, can't, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it basically means, uh, I, I learned this word from Rolo Tomasi and he talks about how women will always see things as it relates to their best interests alone. And it's based on evolutionary biology where it's important for them to put themselves first above and beyond anything because they're the bearers of children. So for women to be solipistic is normal. For men, no. Self-denial, mortification, discipline, that's normal. The difference between men and women though, amongst many, is that men need to be taught how to be men. Did you know that? People like to denigrate me sometimes. They say, who needs Elliot to tell them what it is to be a man? The same men that needed fathers and grandfathers and elders to show men, to mirror for men, to demonstrate for men what it is to be a man. For a woman, it's a little different. It's, a, it's more primal. It's more instinctual because, well, for both men and women, we come from the womb of our mother. So you, they kind of can relax into the grace of being what they came from, not a man. You cannot relax into the grace of what you came from, otherwise you'll stay a woman. You have to ascend towards masculinity. And therefore, you need hierarchy. You need fathers. But all that's been thrown out in our culture. Obedience, and you need to be obedient to your father. If you cannot be an obedient man, it's chances are it's because you didn't have a father or because the culture is so disordered, you never respected your father or your father never demanded respect from you or commanded respect from you. Obedience is a virtue. I'm learning this more. And now that I'm no, no longer a rebellious, uh, an adult with a rebellious teenager's mindset, most of y'all, a lot of y'all think like teenage girls with your rebellious mindset.